Hey, this is Adam Ginsberg, and welcome to episode 10 of our series, How to Turn $1,000 into $100,000 using the Bolo Search technology. As always, your results will vary. We make no income claims or promises, and everyone that has access to this technology has made an investment in internet mastery. Before we get into today's content, let's do a quick update on our leaderboard. Remember, these are real people in real time getting real results as a result of working with Internet Mastery. And so what you can see here is that our Internet Mastery community is now at 155,318,655. That's 155,318,000 in sales on Amazon. What an amazing group of people we have in our Internet Mastery community. And the reality is we're still just getting started in our path to $1 billion in sales on Amazon. Now, as we get into our content here, I want to remind everybody what a Bolo deal is and what the purpose of this technology was really set out to do. Bolo deals are be on the lookout, but Bolo deals are opportunities. Some of them are going to be perfect. Some of them are going to require reverse engineering and understanding and training. Some of them will simply lead to other opportunities. You've heard the phrase that when one door closes, another door opens. We've learned in this series how to do so many different things related to finding the deals. We analyze 26 different data points. And you know that when you analyze these Bolo deals, we've already done so much of the legwork. But one of the things that we're always going to be dealing with are changes on Amazon. And one of the things that I've noticed in just the first 10 episodes as we've been creating this series are the changes that Amazon is making to their platform. You know, over time, we learn to understand that the Amazon marketplace is constantly evolving. And as sellers on Amazon, one of the most important attributes we can have is not just being open and coachable, but understanding the ability to adapt to change. Amazon is constantly changing their systems, and this can become very frustrating when somebody isn't aware of these changes. So there used to be a time when, as Amazon sellers, we could literally sell anything on Amazon. It was like the, the wild, wild west. And then Amazon introduced this concept of category gating where certain categories like beauty and clothing and shoes were just simply gated. And it was a very, very simple process. You met with wholesalers, you got wholesale invoices, you bought your inventory, and Amazon, once you provided them that information, would ungate you in those categories. Well, then Amazon moved from category gating to what's now called brand restriction. So some categories and some brands are gated, but then there are some brands that are gated. In other words, you can't sell them even though you can sell in that category. So we've talked about this in the past where some discovery toys or sharper image toys might be gated even though you're ungated in the toy category. Well, now what we're starting to see here just in episode number 10, although I covered it a little bit previously, is that now it's almost as if everything that we look at on Amazon is gated. Now, you have to understand what's going on on the back end of Amazon to really realize what's happening in this process. Amazon now will, when somebody is creating a new Amazon account, in many cases, send them a postcard in the mail to verify that they are at that address. The second thing that they started implementing were video interviews. Now, back in the day, we didn't have postcards and we didn't have video interviews. Everybody was just simply approved. But now Amazon needs to make sure you're a real person. So again, big picture, understand that Amazon is trying to combat sellers that are unscrupulous, unethical, and out to defraud people. So Amazon is protecting the Amazon marketplace. So what they're doing now it seems, and I haven't heard any confirmation with this, 
but it seems like Amazon is automatically showing that all items, and I won't say all like everything, like 100%, but it seems like a majority of the items that we go to list on Amazon are now gated. And that freaks people out. It scares people. It makes them real nervous because they don't know what to do. And they think that now they're not going to be able to make any money selling on Amazon. Well, what we're discovering as we go through this process is that Amazon is more lenient when an Amazon account has had more sales, more feedback, their metrics are more seasoned. And Amazon knows that that seller is a reputable seller. So think about it in terms of somebody who's applying for a credit card for the very first time. Someone that has no credit will not get a credit card with a limit of $50,000. They might get a credit with a limit of $300 or $500, or $1,000. And as they show that they can pay their bills on time and they show that they are credit worthy, what happens? The credit card companies start extending more credit and raising those credit limits. And it seems like that's the direction that Amazon is going. Now, again, I, I can't confirm, I'm not gonna deny, but I'm starting to see it on a more frequent basis. The good news is that even though everything appears to be gated, why do I keep doing that? I don't know why. I started doing that the other day and I'm not really sure why, but I'm gonna see if I can stop. How about that? What did I learn in this, in this Bolo series episode 10? that I do this maybe way too often. Anyway, that's just my own little thing. Sorry for the interruption there. So what we're starting to notice is that these items are all gated. However, if you simply follow the process to get ungated, more than 50% of the items will instantly be ungated. And that's one of the things that I want to encourage you to do when you access your Bolo deals. The very first thing, before you look at what's selling and what's not, before you look at the profitability, before you look at the retailer to see if it's in stock, just click the Spy Rivals lookup button and see if you can get approved for that item. Now, there's going to be a couple of different options. I think I did this last series, but uh, last episode, but I want to do it again here. And that is to make sure that you understand that sometimes you're instantly approved and sometimes you'll have to provide the invoices from the wholesaler. Down the road in this Bolo series, we are going to be introducing Bolo deals from wholesalers. Yeah, I said it. I'll give you a little tease. Down the road, some of the Bolo deals will not just be from retailers, but they'll also be from wholesalers. And so we'll have all kinds of opportunities to expand and grow this Bolo experience. But in the meantime, let me go ahead and jump into my account. I'm not going to analyze the deals yet. I'm just going to take a look and see what I could get instantly approved and what I can't. Let's check it out now. Okay, so here I am on my Bolo deals page. I'm going to click on the Spy Rivals lookup button. I'm going to go directly to the list on Amazon tab and you'll see that it says that I need approval to list. So I'm going to click on request approval via Seller Central and then I'm going to click on request approval. When I click request approval, you can see in this case that it is asking me to submit invoices or documents, which means that the only way that I could sell this item on this listing would be to purchase it wholesale. So I'm going to close out of this listing and I'm going to head over to the next one. I'm going to click on Spy Rivals Lookup, list on Amazon and request approval via Seller Central. And now I'm going to click on request approval. And again, in this case, I need to provide documents, but you'll notice that the request that Amazon is asking for is different than it was in the previous example. Let's try it again. Now, in this case, I'm going to click on Spy Rivals Lookup, and you can see that it is not selling very well, but again, not the point of this exercise. Now, I'm going to click on Request Approval. Now, the reason that I want to stop there is something very specific to Entertainment Earth. I happen to think that Entertainment Earth provides an insane opportunity for Amazon sellers. And what I love about the Bolo deals is the ability for 
everybody to not just see what is selling on the Bolo deal itself, but to provide new opportunities as we've discussed in the past. But in this specific case, it turns out that Entertainment Earth is very friendly to Amazon sellers from a wholesaler's perspective. So just a little insight into Entertainment Earth, they sell retail and they sell direct to the consumer. So we can do our retail arbitrage, we can buy items at a great discount, and we can sell them on Amazon. Now, Entertainment Earth is also known for selling items in advance, in other words, pre-sell. I happen to think that is a great idea, particularly with Entertainment Earth, because what happens is if you wait for this item to get into stock, it will already be sold out. There are enough people and enough demand for these items when they are sold in pre-release. So I recommend if the item is not in stock, and you'll find that with Entertainment Earth, that happens a lot. I would recommend placing the pre-order and following the steps necessary to make that happen. Now, one of the other things that I love about Entertainment Earth from a wholesale perspective is just how friendly they are to Amazon sellers. So as you're going through this process, I, I'm not going to recommend retail arbitrage versus wholesale arbitrage. I'm not going to tell you whether you should buy it retail or you should buy it wholesale. But what I am going to say to you is that since you have to make your decisions based on your business, I'm advising you to set up a wholesale account with Entertainment Earth. What's awesome is that their limits of how much you have to buy are relatively low. I do want to make sure that one thing I share with you that you really understand, though, is that Entertainment Earth, like several other wholesalers now, will offer to prep your items and send them directly to Amazon. I want to discourage you, no matter how alluring that sounds, from doing that. There's a very specific purpose for having your items prepped properly and efficiently. So if you're an Internet Mastery community member, have those items sent directly to the prep center or to your house, preferably the prep center, so you don't have to do it. But just avoid the allure when you see where it says we will prep your items and send them to Amazon for you to just avoid that part of the process. I don't want to get into that in this session. That's not the purpose of this training. I just wanted to let you know that they may bring that up with you. And if they do, just say no thank you and have it shipped to the prep center. Let, let me show you how to do that, by the way, because some of you might say, oh my gosh, just this was worth the entire 10 episodes of the Bolo Search series. Let, let's take a look and see. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click on this link from Entertainment Earth and have it take me to the Entertainment Earth page. And you'll see here that this item is restocking soon. Order now and we'll deliver it when it is available. Now you say, why would I want to do that? Well, here's why you want to do that, because it may never become available. See, if you order it now, it will become available and you will have access to it. But what happens, as I mentioned, it's all supply and demand. People who are selling the Entertainment Earth product very well place the order. As soon as they can place the order, they lock in that inventory. And then Entertainment Earth creates a certain amount or gets access to a certain amount of inventory. And most of the time, it is completely sold out upon release before any of the general public actually gets to buy it. So if you're going to uh, Entertainment Earth and you're looking up items over and over and over and it seems like they're all out of stock, that's the reason. It isn't that they're bad deals. It's that those are deals that are pre-ordered. So again, I encourage you to do the pre-order. I think if you do it once or twice and then see the benefit from it, you'll be more encouraged to do it a little bit more. But let me just jump back into Entertainment Earth and show you something else I think you'll really like. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to scroll to the bottom of the Entertainment Earth page. And you'll see here that under behind the scenes, there's a link that says how to buy from us wholesale. 
I'm gonna click on that link. And when I do, I'll be taken to a different website. This website is eedistribution.com. And what you'll see here is that if you already have an account, you can log in. You need to log in to be able to see wholesale pricing. And you'll see all the benefits of applying for an account, including this one that says ships directly to Amazon FBA. Again, I'm gonna encourage you not to do that and to utilize the prep center in that process. But completing the initial application is really simple. First name, last name, email, retype your email, put in your company, and then your phone number, and then how you found them, okay? We don't have a Adam Ginsberg or Internet Mastery. There is an other, and uh, you just select other, and you can now set up your wholesale account with EE. Now, they may ask you for your tax ID and your business entity. So hopefully by now, if you're watching this and you're all the way to episode 10, you already have all that set up with Prime Corporate. You've got your business entity, your LLC, your EIN. So you're all set to buy wholesale. But I think what's really powerful about this is that once you apply and you get approved, you will get the entire catalog from Entertainment Earth you'll get the wholesale pricing. You'll see what you can invest in. You'll see what quantities you need. And then if you are a pro member with Internet Mastery, of course, you'll be able to use Wholesale Analyzer and analyze the entire spreadsheet of their catalog all at one time. The purpose of this session is not to run through all of the different, as I said, all of the different wholesale opportunities, but it gives you the insight that if you're ready or wanting or willing to move from arbitrage on a retail perspective and just dip your toe in the water and test, Entertainment Earth really is a great way to look at some wholesale opportunities. And again, last point, I'll repeat myself one more time, and that is make sure that you do not buy from EE, send direct to Amazon, and please make sure that you order inventory, pre-order it before it comes in. All right, let me jump back into my Bolo deals now and continue. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna take a look at uh, this one here. This is the Tales of Iron from Best Buy. I'll click on uh, look up here in Spy Rivals. And this says I need request approval. So I'll click the button, click on request approval. And in this case, Look at what it says. Now, again, this is brand new. L let me be very clear. This is a brand new way that Amazon is showing new people how they can get approved. So if we take a look at the page, it says that I've been approved, but I have to watch a video. L let's take a look at that in more depth. So we can see here that it says that selling application for the brand, you're requesting approval to sell uh, before you list the items, please watch the following video. And then it asks you to answer the following questions, okay? So what I'm going to come up here is I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to watch the video now. Welcome to our training on Amazon anti-counterfeiting policy. So what Amazon wants you to do is understand the process to make sure that your items are real and genuine. So in this case, it says, are you a reseller, distributor, manufacturer, or obviously a reseller? Which of the following statements describes your responsibility? Once I'm approved, I can sell without uh, needing to vet the product. I don't need to review every product. If another seller is already selling the product, it's allowed to be sold. And the last one is I'm responsible for all the products I sell on Amazon and understand whether they violate the law. Now, that's the answer there. Obviously, I haven't watched the video yet, but I'm pretty confident in that answer. If you list products for sale on Amazon that are illegal or otherwise in violation of Amazon policy, it could result in your listings might be reviewed, your selling might be reviewed, your account might be blocked. Well, that's obviously all of the above. Again, I encourage you to watch the video. Which of the following represent best practices when selling on Amazon to ensure compliance? Assign one or more employees to be responsible. Carefully review restricted products. If buying inventory, apply extra diligence. When in doubt, do not list it. If selling drugs or supplements, okay, the answer to this one is all of the above. All products I intend to sell are authentic, counterfeit, uh, are authentic. 
Counterfeit replica or knockoff products are prohibited on Amazon. All products I intend to sell. Now, this is the first time that I'm seeing this video. And this is the first time that I'm seeing these questions. I've been doing this a long time. I know what the answers to the questions are without actually watching the video. But what's fascinating is everything that I said at the beginning of this session was literally just validated by what we experienced in this process. One of the things I love about doing these, these sessions is I do them in real time. I have moments and you have moments just by simply participating. This is, uh, this is a, lot of, a lot of content in this particular episode. So let's go ahead and finish the process and let's see what happens together. And there we have it. Your selling application for this brand is approved. And there you go. So Amazon wants to protect Amazon. Amazon wants to make sure that its sellers understand the policies and that you agree to those policies from selling on Amazon. So this is just another layer of protection and one more thing that's going to separate you from everybody else who's selling on Amazon. The fact of the matter is that 99% of the people that try to list that item on Amazon are going to see that the item is gated or restricted and they're not going to be able to sell it. Now, for that 1% of people who try to get approved, they may or may not get as far as we did. But when they see that they have to watch a video and they have to answer the questions, there's a lot of people that will just throw their hands up in the air and say, you know what, this is way too much work. Having the ability to know what to do and to follow the steps. And again, I want to encourage you, if you run into this exact situation, and my intuition is that it's going to happen more and more and more often, watch the video. Please watch the video. Not this video. Watch the video that Amazon asks you to watch. It's not complex, but I want to make sure that you're not only learning the process, but answering the questions properly in case Amazon changes some of it from the time this video is filmed until the time you're applying to get ungated. So in this particular case, we went through the process. We're now in the 1% of the 1% of people who can now sell this item. Now, remember that this process is going to be based on the historical a role of your account. So if you've been selling on Amazon for a while and you have good metrics, you may not be asked to get ungated in this item or for this item. But if your account is new, you might have to follow the process that I just followed. So recognize again that what Amazon does is specific to you and not just some general concept where we could say, Everyone's approved. Everyone's not approved. For different situations, different people are going to see different things. But now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and take care of this Bolo deal and let's go ahead and knock it out of the park. All right. Now, what we can see here is that my profit is 26% or $3.89 per unit if I do it at the $28.71. I'm going to raise my price just slightly which will increase my profit just a little bit. I'm gonna click on Spy Rivals Lookup. And when I do, we can see that uh, the estimated daily sales are 8.5 a day, which is about 270 units a month. And my estimated monthly buys for my velocity is 19.5. Now, when I buy my inventory, I actually prefer to go wide rather than deep. I never really like to buy on a first test order 19 of anything, even though the system says I can sell 19 in the first month, I'm going to buy 12. Now, the next thing that I want to do before I actually make my purchase from Best Buy is I want to list the item in my Amazon account. So I'm going to head back over to Spy Rivals where I can list that item directly. I don't need to go over to Amazon. Let's do that together. And then I'll go ahead and buy those items. Let me list it now. So on the list on Amazon page, it asks me what price I want to list it for. I'm going to say $29.05. And I'll select my account and I'll just simply click on list on Amazon. And now my item has been submitted to Amazon to be listed. And just in terms of typical time frame, when listing an item on Amazon, it typically will be live in your Amazon account 
within about 15 minutes. So the best thing to do after listing the item is to go buy the item from the retailer or the wholesaler. In this case, I'm gonna buy it from Best Buy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna head over to Best Buy. I'm gonna buy 12 units. Now remember that when you are utilizing the prep center, you're gonna buy those units and your ship to address will be the prep center address. You always wanna make sure that your name is somewhere in the two uh, internet mastery care of, I am care of, it doesn't really matter so much as long as your name is identifiable. So when the items arrive at the prep center, we know that they are yours. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy them now. I'll pause the video, I'll buy them now. And then when I get back, I'll run through with you the process of submitting the item directly to the prep center. Alrighty, so I've purchased my 12 units from Best Buy. And now I wanna submit that order to the prep center so that they know that it is on the way. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. It'll just take a few seconds and then I'll share with you what to do next. So this game, which is called Tales of Iron, has now been listed in my Amazon account. So what I want to do is I want to, uh, from the prep center, I want to submit the form with that information. So in the product information field at the top, I'm going to type in Tales of Iron. And the original shipping source, I'm going to type in Best Buy. Now, since I've already listed my item on Amazon, my Internet Mastery Prep Center account is synced with my Amazon seller account. I just simply type in the first few letters of the keywords of the item and it will come up. I'll click on the blue ASIN tab and it will autofill and add in the SKU. From here, I'll just type in my quantity of 12 and click submit. And now my item has been submitted to the prep center. And that is the process. So this episode, episode 10, it contained a lot of information. You may need to go back and rewatch this so you can unpack some of what it is that we covered. Most importantly, I want you to take away a few things. Number one, it seems like every item that we're gonna be listing on Amazon for one reason or another, looks like it might end up being gated. Now, the good news is that the ungating process is not that complex. You'll either have to submit wholesale invoices, which has always been the case, or you may have to go that extra step instead of automatically being approved to watching a video, answering some questions, and then being approved. One thing that I really want to make sure you understand is that you want this process, I know this is gonna sound strange, but you want this process to be as challenging for people as possible. Why? Just think about it this way. Imagine that you were trying to get over a wall now, I understand that you want the wall to be low, but once you're over the wall, you want the wall to be as high as possible to keep other people from climbing and going over that wall. So at the end of the day, you wanna keep as many people out, which means you want this process to be as challenging as possible. I know that it doesn't seem that way, but with your training, your education, your expertise, these videos helping you and guiding you along with your coach and your mentor and your support, and of course the amazing technology. You have access to the ability to do things that most people simply don't have access to. And that gives you an incredible strategic advantage. The other takeaway was that you just might want to create an Entertainment Earth a wholesale account and look at starting to get some of their catalogs, some of their information, and perhaps placing your first wholesale order. Of course, you have to have your business entity and your LLC and your EIN and all of that set up. And then remember, it's okay. In fact, it is suggested and recommended to place pre-orders. I know that sometimes it feels like it could be weeks or months before these items show up. But once they start showing up and they start trickling in, you'll start to have an advantage. Again, it's all about the first mover advantage over people who now see that it's almost available. And then when they go place the order, it's already been sold out. Episode 10 is in the books. 
I am so excited that you are part of this journey. Go back, watch the previous episodes. Now, I didn't ask you to subscribe. I figure if you want to, you will. And if you don't want to, guess what? You should, so you can get early access to this amazing training. Hey, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you. I'll see you in episode 11.